uh, welcome to PSII and in the fall of 2020, a slightly different orientation and look to the place, but our philosophy underlying everything is the same. Um, it's been challenging for sure to, to do what we do here in this new new world that we have at school, but um, I'm gonna explain it to you right now. So um, we'll, we'll, you'll see a tour in a bit, we'll walk around and the places will actually help you understand a little bit more about how we do business, but um, underlying everything at the school is, uh, and right in our name is the word inquiry, and at the school, everything comes from individual uh, lines of inquiry. So um, about a month ago, all of our learners came in and they began to generate questions. Uh, we help them refine those questions uh, and those become the springboard for their curriculum at the school. We don't have a timetable. We don't have um, anything set in stone except for supporting that inquiry process to start. And then as people develop their, their lines of inquiry, um, when they start to take shape and they start to know what they need in terms of research and other resourcing, we begin to build our timetable around, the, around that inquiry. So uh, we're at that place now. So we now have a, a very rich, full schedule. Um, when you look at it, you might think, oh, you just planned that in the summer or in the spring, but we didn't. We wait until the learners have told us what they need and kind of the order that they needed in the depth and sort of how large are the groups that we need to accommodate. This year, the added uh, challenge has been, where do you put a group? Because uh, we sort of used every square inch of the place for just for people to have a place to sit. Um, so we've had to be a little bit creative about how we do that. This year, when we bring groups together, it's a combination of in-person. When it's a small group, we've rented a little site off, a little space off-site um, to, to use once in a while to gather. And we uh, also can, we also use Zoom sometimes even in school. So people might be sitting in the school, but in different locations and we're Zooming a meeting. Maybe there's four or five people in the room and there's maybe another eight or nine people out sitting somewhere in the school on Zoom or at home. Uh, so it's been a very different year, but the technology is certainly working for us. It's been, it's been good. We had a lot of practice in the spring, so we got, we got good at it. Um, other than, other than the inquiry, uh, the beginning of the inquiry process is, is sort of developing questions, beginning to research those questions. As the research gets deeper, um, people begin to uh, refine the questions again, because when you learn a lot about something, you have better questions and more questions usually, almost always. And um, then we uh, help them design, uh, we call it co-construction, and the teacher alongside of the learner develops a set of learning activities that go uh, very deeply into the into the topic of, uh, or topics that are aligned with the inquiry. So the research is just the first step. The second step may involve more research as well, but also gets into doing things. So mm -hmm. that could be in the school, it could be out in the community, it could be a combination. Um, lots of collaborative things tend to happen in that stage. Um, that's where if there's a product, that's where the product would happen. But quite often there is just a process and not a product, although whatever either one works uh, mm -hmm. we're not project based we're we're inquiry based so there may not be an actual project mm -hmm. uh, this year it looks like there's a lot of projects so i guess the other thing that's important to note is that because it's driven by questions we don't force those questions into a subject area so um these inquiry these lines of inquiry are completely interdisciplinary which is also fascinating so when you offer um a session in i don't know uh thermodynamics and physics there could be people there who are really wanting to get the content of a physics course, but there could also be people who are learning about it. So when they write a science fiction novel, it does, they don't wreck it by having inaccurate information or um, they're trying to understand something because they're going to be building it in robotics or whatever it might be. Like, who knows? We, we actually had a physics class recently where somebody is trying to figure out how to make a, um, a sculpture that is... Uh, interactive with wind and rain in Victoria that's going to be a public art piece and they needed to know a few things about um, how do you sense rain how do you make sure that you're sensing it multiple times and not just once I think it's wet and then it's done um, you know and what, what kind of technology does that so that we were talking about sort of sensing sound in, in a physics sense but it was completely for an art piece hmm. yeah. that's really cool yeah it's yeah. fun it's it is fun um, we have, there's seven of us uh, teachers, and so we all, we're all just qualified, certified teachers, just like everywhere else in, in BC. Um, we do have our specialties, but we don't necessarily teach that way. When, if there is a session that kind of falls into our 
our area of expertise. Um, we will be the person who you know kind of offers that that session or that class. But often we're working together because these things are interdisciplinary. So you know uh, a learner might need to gather up a few teachers to talk to them about something to get all the perspectives that are required. Yeah. That can be daunting for a learner, so we have uh, an organization group structure where each each learner has belongs to a group of about thirteen or fourteen people, and that the teacher with that group kind of helps navigate that sort of stuff because it's pretty new for most people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for going to find teachers and tell them what it is you need them to do for you <laughs> is very unusual. So um, they need a bit of help with that. They get better at it as they go until pretty soon you would like them to stop coming to ask you for things because they, they really know what they want and they're really organized and, and ready to go. Um, organization in the background, um, we have a portfolio that we use to um, uh, track learning, um, uh, reflections on learning and even some, and sometimes products, depending on you know what, what the artifact is. Uh, that was made by one of our learners uh, on a Zen 4.0 platform. So we have a very nice, uh, uh, portfolio it keeps getting better all the time. People can access it long after they graduate. They can export all the content out of it if they want to, or they can keep using it if they want to. And we just block ourselves from it so they yeah. can just keep using it. That's cool. Which is very nice. Yeah. Um, we can you can upload anything into it: um, audio, video, any kind of images, whatever, whatever you want. Yeah. Um, and you can tag it with competencies. We use competencies to organize our learning instead of courses. Mm -hmm. And so they can tag everything in, in the portfolio with, with competencies or anything else that they want actually yeah. to sort it later. Yeah. Um, the other organizational piece that's our, we have a few, but the biggest other one is Trello, which we use, which um, is a, a very nice sort of planning software, kind of keeping you on track managing lots of things that are going on at once and making sure they're moving in the right direction or moving at all yeah. <laughs> um, and, al and allowing um, a teacher to be able to see that really easily and really clearly. Um, so seeing things in, you know, different states of doneness, mm -hmm. but also being able to tag teachers and other learners to say, Hey, I need your help. I want to talk to you about this. Or we tag and share a resource and attach it to their Trello, things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, that's sort of us. That's kind of what we do. Okay.